Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here, and in today's video, we are going to talk about how we will do something like this effect. So this is a video I saw on Instagram by Alt Shift Official, right? And I think it was done using Houdini, right? But like you know, Cinema 4D has released a new version of Cinema 4D, which is Cinema 4D 2023. I have a video here talking about the new features and stuff, right? And one of the features actually got me thinking how easy it will be it will be to do this particular um effect right so let's actually go into cinema 4d 2023 and see how we will do this effect and it got me thinking that it will be easy right especially with this new simulation updates and stuff so let's actually get into cinema 4d and first of all let's create our object that it, um our rubber bands are going to collide with so i'll just create a normal um platonic right i'll change the platonic type to i think octa so this is what we have and let's get let's extrude it but for it to stay parametric i don't want to actually um make it editable so i'll just go into my asset manager and in the notes if we search for extrude so if i type in extrude you can see we have this extrude of um effect here we can it's a capsule so we can simply drag and drop it into our object manager on our object and you can see now it's a child of our object now you can see it's extruding our object right so let's go ahead and extrude it a bit more probably let's see 100 right so now it's extruding it and you can get a bit of variation in the extrude so some will be taller maybe let's do it 120 right and let's see give it a bit of variation right and now let's put it in there subdivision surface so this is what we are going to extrude um, um use as a collider body right let's subdivision surface so in the sub let's increase it a bit so that it's smoother right so now this is our object that we are going to collide with the next thing is i'll right click on the object and i'll come to animation tags and i'll add vibration uh, vibration tag to it in the vibration tag i'll enable rotation i'll set it to like maybe 180 maybe um 180 and 180 and i'll reduce the frequency to probably 0.5 and now if you hit play you can see this is the object that we want our uh, rubber bands to collide with all right so now let's go ahead and create our rubber band so the rubber band i'm going to actually use a normal cylinder and in this i'm trying to make everything stay parametric so that we don't make anything editable so i'll cre uh, create a cylinder and I'll make the cylinder the radius to probably 300 and I'll reduce the height to maybe 50 All right we don't want the caps in here so I'll come into the tab caps type tab I'll disable I'll uncheck the caps and now we have this is going to be our rubber band right and let's come back into the object tab and let's increase the segment to probably mm, mm, maybe 80 will be fine for now and let's reduce the height segment as well so if we come into our display and see this is our object that we want uh, our rubber band and we want it to collide with this um, um, object that we've created in the middle right so if you right click on our cylinder and come into our simulation tags you can see we have our cloth tag so if i enable the cloth tag if i hit play or four because there's gravity right if i hit you can see it's falling so what you have to do is to hit type control hit control d and you bring it to your project settings and now in the project setting you go to the simulation tab tab and in the simulation tab you can see you have two tabs simulation and scene so we go into the scene and in the gravity we make sure it's zero so that the gravity don't affect our object when we play it will not fall but it's actually um a cloth object right now if i select the cloth tag and come in the cloth tag in the surface tab you can see we have target uh, target length and that's what we are actually going to use so the target length basically sort of shrinks or expand your cloth basically that's what it does so right now it's set 100 percent and that's it's going to stay default but if i should increase it and hit play you can see it's expanding my um cylinder and if i should bring it to like say 20 percent and if i should hit play you can see it's actually shrinking it right and it's colliding with my um 
object that I've created in the middle. So we are actually going to shrink it. So I'll probably leave it at 20. One thing I don't like about this is that it's very instant. So if I just press on this one, see from frame zero to frame one, you can see it starts moving. It's quite quick and it would have been nice for Cinema 4D to make it like the balloon, which you can actually make it grow over time, right? You can see the expansion over time in the balloon tab, but it's not like that. So let's go back to the surface and in the target, let's leave it at 20. If you want it to grow over time, what you can actually do is that, let's say, um, I'll set it to 100 at frame 0, 100, and maybe at frame 25. I'll, bring, I'll make it like 20. Right, and now if I hit set keyframe, now if I hit play, it will gradually shrink and inform, um, like make it get smaller. Now, one thing we have to do is I've not actually added a collider body to the object that we wanted to collide. So it's not colliding. I thought it was colliding, but it's not. So I right click on the subdivision surface and I come to simulate, um, simulation tags and I'll choose collider tag, right? And now if I hit play, can see our object are colliding. Let me actually take out the shading and probably add a material to it. So I'll click on this plus and I'll add a material to the cylinder. Now let me make it um, red so that we can see. Now you can see if I hit play, our rubber band is colliding with our object and everything is smooth. So just with one object like this, it's quite easy and it's quite simple. We can even make it way smaller. Um, let me select it for now you for now let's leave everything as it is so let's me go in and do some small settings in it all right so i'll increase the friction to a whole lot probably 50 right and i'll also select the collider tag as well and i'll come into the friction i'll also increase it to probably a lot a lot more can even be two and now if i hit play you can see it collides and it's sticking to the object right so this is something we want but how do we get it to pop and come in like um, the video I showed earlier? So how do we get it to pop and come in like this? So that's what you are going to do. And we can't separately create all these individual cylinders. So definitely in Sima 4D, what you can use to create clones of any object is the cloner object, right? So we will create a cloner object. And if you make the cylinder a child of the cloner object, you can see it's already um, cloned the object on a grid. Um, on a grid mode three by three right we don't want it to be there we want it to be popping up coming out um, from nowhere so that's what we are going to do so the way to do that is we are going to use particles right and particles is something that pops up like from nowhere right so we go into our simulation tag tab we choose our emitter and then we select the emitter come into the emitter tab um, emitter attributes and go into the emitter tab, make sure the size is set to one by one so that the particles will be popping from different places. I want it to literally stay in the middle. And now let's go back into the particles. Maybe I reduce it to like say six by six. And from here, right, everything can stay the same. It doesn't really matter. So in the clone object, we change the mode from grid to object. And the object you want our clone to be cloning on is the emitter, All right? So if I drag in, any time the emitter pop, let me hide the collider object for now. Any time the emitter, any time the emitter um, spits a particle, you know the clone will be generated on it, All right? So if I zoom out a bit and hit play, you can see that's what's happening. But it's not the cloth and everything is not affecting our clones, and that's because it's on the cylinder. So simply let's drag and drop it on the clone. And now let me bring back my object that we want to collide. And if I hit play, you can see it's working right from there. All right, it pops and everything literally starts working. So from here going, we are good to go, Gabby, but you know, as it's simulation and dynamics, the calculation and everything might not be accurate. So you have to play around to get the kind of effect you want. So probably what I'll do is I'll hit Control D, first of all, go into the um, project settings and in the simulation tab, I'll come to the simulation 
and now increase the damping so what it's basically doing is that reducing the way it pops and the speed it goes right so that it will like at least reduce the the energy in the um rubber bands that are popping so if i hit play and see there's a little bit of reduction even though it's still fast but the dampening reduces it a bit all right so that's one way another thing is that they are all popping from one side so um like the shape of the rubber band it's all popping from you can see it's all popping from one side but we want a bit of random rotation in it so just select the clone and come into our um effect um, effectors and we will choose um random i come to the parameter tab on check position and i'll check rotation right and we rotate this one to like 360 and if we hit play i can see it comes from different um with different rotations all right so we are good like from here going all we have to do is to be playing around with it so for instance i'll take off the bendiness from our um, tag so the bending i'll set it bendiness to zero all right and then what else maybe the thickness i want it to feel like something and a thick object i don't want it to look like a, a thing object right so i'll probably increase the thickness to like say three and hit play you know so i'll keep playing around with it to eventually you get something that you feel um works let's actually increase our frames can see our objects are being generated another thing we are like probably let me actually go into the project setting so because this is simulation you literally have to play around with certain things so hit ctrl d and come into our um project settings again in the simulation and maybe i'll see if i increase the collision passes to probably five and see maybe if you improve our collision a bit you know that's not bad let's still come in here um so basically from here going it's playing around to get something um you want but you get the idea it literally collides with your objects and you can even come into the cylinder maybe yeah we reduce the height maybe 60 will be fine so from here going basically the idea is there you can see so you play around with it so you get something you want now to add thickness to objects what we can do if you can see first of all there's no enough segment in it so it looks a bit jagged so we can use the subdivision surface or you can go ahead and increase your rotation segment but that will also change the simulation so you have to actually make sure your segment is how you want it before you do your simulation so for us to get uh um, the smoothness you can use the subdivision surface so with the clone selected if i hold alt and click on the subdivision surface you can see now we have smooth object and also the objects need thickness right so we can also use the cloth surface so that one right on the subdivisions because you have the subdivision surface selected or we can simply create our cloth surface and drag our subdivision surface in it we take off the subdivision and increase the thickness to like one you can see we have thickness. now the next thing is how to get the randomness right so first of all let me take off the material from the cylinder and drag it on the cloth surface so how do we get the randomness on our um on the cloth surface with this and what you are going to if you want to do it using my body render what you are going to do is to use the material um variation color variation in the effect so in the color if i click on this texture then this icon here and go to effects you can see we have variation this variation shader if i click on it you can see it's changed everything now i, I click on this white thumbnail i go into the variation shader, shader and in the the color i'll come down here see the random color mode i actually make it um, replace and if it's nothing is showing here but if we hit render you see we have variation different variation of our colors 
you can actually go ahead and limit it to the kind of colors you want. So for instance, if I say, I don't want this random, right? I can actually like take off the randomness and I want it to be within this range, this color, like the gradient blue and white, right? So I can increase, increase the gradient blend and I'll change it from normal to the replace. And now if I hit render, you can see we have shades of white to blue, right? So it could be, I can let me add any other color, maybe red in here. All right, I can even add um, yellow. And you can see if I close it and hit render, the colors you have, you can see we have shades of white, yellow, blue, and the red, the colors I added. So that's how you go ahead and add the kind of colors you want. So this is something that was actually inspired by the Cinema 4D R, um, not R rather, um, 2023 version which was released. I saw this particular effect and I realized it's something that you can easily create with this particular um, feature, which is the um, target length, right? So it's really interesting and it was very quick to figure out like how I'll do something like this using um, the Cinema 4D target length and one thing you have to notice that because it's simulation usually you want to make your simulation everything done before you add stuff like the subdivision surface and the um, sub um, cloud surface because it sort of interact um, yeah sort of disrupt the simulation so you can see if I hit play it's sort of in you know this entering the polygons and stuff so Usually I'll take it off and make sure my sim, everything is fine. You know, the simulation, everything is fine after that. Or after you feel your simulation, everything is fine. The last thing, what you have to do is to bake your, um, or cache your simulation. So if you select your plot and you come into the cache tab, you can actually cache your scene before you add all those effects so that it doesn't distract your simulation. So this is something I figured out and I felt like I could share and it's interesting. Hope um, this was useful and you learned something from it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.